So now into our awards. Uh, three years ago, I started an award that would go to an auxiliary staff person, someone who doesn't work as an assistant coach, but Thor knows this is better than anyone. There's so many people behind the scenes that mean so much to the basketball program, the football program, the tennis program, the golf program. So I thought we would honor those folks. So we, we honored um, Wendell Kelly, our academic advisor, was retiring. And last year, a player favorite and a couple of moms favorite, uh, Tracy Burns, who left the university, was my administrative assistant and worked with Tom for 12 years as his administrative assistant. Um, and it was the only award we had that wasn't named. So last summer, I thought we should really name that in some someone's honor, but it was special to me. And so I thought who would be, and I had a lot of good thoughts going on with people who contributed to the program, and then one name came to me. I can't claim any special friendship with this man. I knew him for nine, uh, maybe seven years. He always treated me well, but I came upon him treated everybody well, which didn't make me feel diminished, made me feel even better. He was a former assistant coach for Deutsche Ben. He was uh, dean of financial aid. He affected thousands and thousands of young people's lives. There were people literally who would not have graduated from the university without this man's help. Sympathetic ear, big heart, uh, loved the game of golf. So I came up with the idea, I turned to my friend Tom Dugan first and said, I have this idea, and Tom was totally <coughs> for all of it. And then I called my friend Tom Brennan. He was 100% behind it. And then I reached out for uh, this gentleman's son, Nick, and said I had this idea, but I won't do this without your mom's approval. I, uh, this this young lady, uh, uh, Peggy Amaral, she was always very supportive of the program. Harry was always supportive of the program. But even when Harry passed, I'd always get something from Peggy. The first year we did this banquet, I asked people if they were willing to sponsor a player dinner so the program would help pay for it. God's honest truth, the first check we got was a note from Peggy Amaral. So it was easy for me to say that I wanted to have the stack Staff Recognition Award named after the great Harry Emerald. Um, so at this time, whichever, all three of you want, I know it's going to take the joy of the wife to get Peggy to come up here, but whoever would like to come up and help present this award for the Emerald, I know we're glad to have show, uh, I see Nina 25 times a year at the bank, but I get hung her twice, which I think we should create as a tradition in the bank. Uh, so, as I told you, Wink Kelly Ackman was advising, Charlie B. Ackman applied, Tracy took care of me and Tom, ran the Adams Cup, ran the Sodding before she left, uh, do all the players, uh, they text her, call her, sit out in the office, uh, great person, and so the third one was going to be unique, uh, because it was the third one. And this is going to be quite a surprise, but um, I looked at all the people who contributed to URI Golf, and this, this year we had something very special happen to the golf program. We had someone come and really change who we were publicly, something I had thought about for two years, um, and really needed someone to catapult us in a way that would get us more in the public eye. Uh, so I endeavored to have this person come to my office, and she created our Facebook presence, she created a Twitter account, she presented a um, social media plan for us. It's something we've never had. A lot of schools had, the big schools had. This kid worked all the time on this. She, she was always coming in, giving me ideas. Um, I'm sure there's a few people already know who it is, but uh, could not be more impressed with this young lady. Um, if, if you're not on our Facebook account, you should. Um, we have two or three other people that follow us, and it means a lot. Recruits follow us all the time, so this young woman couldn't be here with us tonight because she's graduating uh, in the next 10 days. Um, uh, I'll also say that oh, about 10 days ago, 11 days ago, she helped lead the University of Georgia to the national, NCAA National Championship in Equestrian. Um, and I will call my dear friend, uh, because we've always seen mom, I would ask that uh, my dear friend Arthur Piranzano come up and accept the award on behalf of his daughter, Faith Piranzano. <laughs> This, this award, that, that award means a lot to me, and I was thrilled to name it uh, in Harry's honor, and it meant even more to me that two of my favorite Tom, 
Thomas Brennan and uh, Julian were so much behind us. Now into what we call our uh, five traditional awards. Uh, the first one, and we'll talk about the segment later, uh, I'd ask that Coach Barber come up. Uh, Coach Barber, like Missy and I, is Jesuit trained, so naturally he's given an academic award. Uh, that being said, I think he's the first Boston College grad ever to have an academic award in his hands at any time. <laughs> I like that. Again, we'll talk about this young man later, but this is a guy, I, you'll see in the release tomorrow, I said it was a combination of old-fashioned uh, parenting and forward thinking. Uh, the 3.26 student, uh, again, I'll go through some more credentials later, but he challenged himself. He came here and he took a very, very tough major. He's had tremendously varied experiences. Um, and uh, someone so fittingly to put his name on the plaque, Andrew Frianzano. A uh, couple other, because he was on the academic side, we had two young men who made the dean's list this year. I'd like to have them come get certificates. First, uh, Eric Marchetti, freshman Eric Marchetti. <laughs> Fellow freshman Billy Wallops. <laughs> Why don't you receive that from Eric Marchetti? There you go. <laughs> you guys can study together later. Um, uh, maybe 12 or 13 years ago, of the Speaker's Award, 12 or 13 years old, maybe. Uh, the Speaker of the House started an award that for these three state uh, uh, higher education entities, CCRI, the Ron College of Rye, each school will be able to honor 10 student athletes. Um, this year, one of the 10 was a young man who was going to receive his award and wasn't able to make it because this was great. He had to go to a study group. So fitting. But in the 12 or 13 years that they've done this, I think we've only had three URI students who have won it twice. And that'll tell you all you need to know. So the uh, Finn Rounds uh, Speaker House Award, Andrew Franzano. Uh, at this time, uh, I'd like to bring up Coach uh, Marcotte. This one comes no surprise, and we'll talk about him again later, but um, there was an award that Coach Trennan started, and I thought this was brilliant. It was named after Paul Quigley, the greatest, most honored amateur in the history of Rhode Island, and Dana Quigley, who, as you know, is the Ironman, played more consecutive senior PGA events than any player ever. <coughs> but two years ago, two years ago, I, I changed it. Instead of the Paul and Dana Quigley Award, I named it the Quigley Award, so we can include um, my dear, dear friend, Devin. Um, it goes to the person who has, through the course of the year, the best stats. It's not just scoring averages, it also promotes things. Uh, an easy choice is your uh, Joe Levitt. Uh, this next award, I'm proud to say that I initiated, and I'd like uh, my friend Jeffrey Ray to come up. Jeffrey's a former winner of this award. This is just the fourth time we've given this award. This is an award given in, name in honor of Mike McCampbell. Uh, Mike McCampbell was on a team for four years. Tom probably played in four or five varsity events in four years, tops. Uh, Chad's a great friend of the program, Vice President Ty Lewis, but Michael had a spirit, loved Uri Golf like you've never seen him. He was a magnet. Everyone wanted to be around him. Uh, he was mirthful. Uh, he was a leader. On the practice team, uh, he was a leader back in golf house. We'll leave it at that. Uh, had fun with everything he did. Handsome, uh, great parents, great sister, great girlfriend. All those things that every mom and dad in this room would, would crave to have for their son. He was just a happy, happy kid. And I was just a sport administrator, but I actually know Michael pretty well. Uh, and about six months after graduation, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and a year later was gone. Uh, it wasn't easy to watch. Uh, Coach Trent and I, and Coach Jones, who's not here, we, we got to see it firsthand a lot more than anyone could see that in a young man. 
So we started with some awards, with Spirit of Rhodey Golf Awards, and it's gone to some great people, Cody Larson, Johnny Kelly, uh, Jeffrey, uh, who have a spirit to our program that is just, just different. Um, this year, I saw Mike's dad at the PGA show, and he asked who was going to the award, and I said, honestly, gosh, Mike, I'm not sure. Nobody ever came so obvious to me. But I talked to uh, Coach Marcotte and Coach Barber, and the more I observed, it became pretty obvious who should get this. This young man uh, has ached to be in the lineup. He's worked so very hard. I've pushed him so very hard. I've done something I hope he remembers the rest of his life as a positive. I've raised the ball on him. Um, great kid, loves Eli Golf. Uh, the Michael Campbell Award goes to Seamus Fenton. Uh, I don't mind being the MC, and I love talking about my guys, but I never present awards. Uh, when we've won, we've been fortunate in my three years, we've won three tournaments. The guys know this, and they all make fun of me, but I would refuse to get in the award picture because I never took a swing. Uh, but on this one, for the first time in my three years, I want to present this one personally. Uh, this is the uh, Ernie Calvary Award. Ernie Calvary, everyone knows, was a great basketball player, great coach, but he was phenomenally good at the golf program. Great supporter, <coughs> pardon me, great supporter of the golf program, and uh, just a, a guy everybody knew. So Coach Drennan, in his wisdom, named this award, the Friend of Brody Golf Award, after him. Uh, we have one former winner here tonight, Dave Marcotte. Former winner. Uh, he's long before his assistant coach, just because what he helped put on the program with Tom Judith and his spirit and his construction. This year, and last year, we went to what I call the first family of Eli Golf from Christ. This year, it was really easy. The hardest part of all was getting him to come. Um, but this guy um, is the president and CEO of a major company in Rhode Island. Uh, great, great college baseball player. Uh, grew up hard. To go to St. John's, play college baseball, and play pro baseball with some of the all time greats. I mean, the all time greats. Um, three years ago, uh, I endeavored to meet him. I'm on the board of uh, a charity called Rock and Jock that uh, John Cafferty and Dean Brownbrand run on the, jock, on the rock side and Dean run the jock side. And uh, he said he wanted to meet me, so we sat uh, at the bar while the banquet went on for about an hour and a half. And I can't tell you how this this young man has changed my outlook on athletics and life and talked about we, we came so we came so personal so early talked about our families and growing up I'm fortunate fortunate to grow up growing up incredibly poor and this guy and I had so much in common we went to good Catholic schools we have the same values and when the time came that I asked him to help us along with Coach Barber's help help us with the Adams Cup he didn't blink uh, but for all of this company does for us, it would be easy for me to say that this, this award goes to Stock Brother and Shepley's, but it completely underestimates what this man has meant. He's gotten to know a number of our players. He's created internships, opportunities for them, and he's made me think every single day the influence I can have on these young men. And I can say this without fail. My dear friend, an inspiration, a great athlete, a great uh, corporate citizen, uh, and someone I'm proud to know and proud to my friend, the great Matt Collins. Excited to accept this award, and it's not really an award for me. It's a, it's an award for Stockweather and Shepley. Uh, people that don't know who Stockweather and Shepley is, we're the uh, oldest and largest insurance agency in the uh, state. Actually, we're celebrating our 135th anniversary this year, so uh, something we're really proud of. <laughs> Listening to the stories brought back many, many, many memories for me tonight. Uh, I was a baseball player, like Greg said, at St. John's, and. Uh, I, I think about how lucky the players are here. Uh, I had a great coach at St. John's, his name was Jack Kaiser, and uh, he taught me a lot, a lot of good things about life. Uh, it wasn't just about playing ball, it was learning, it was building character, building values, and that's what you're getting here from Coach Burke, from Coach Barber, from Coach Marcotte. I said, when you look, and you look back on your lives, players, and you, and you 
come back, you're going to cherish these moments because I, I've done that now. And I know when times get tough, I think about Coach Kaiser a lot. He was like my second father. And I think about the values he put into me and instilled in me. And, uh, and, when, and as I say, when things got tough, I always think about what he used to tell me what to do and all. And you'll be doing the same thing in life. Uh, you're going to build up a lot of character here. Uh, it's good that coach is pushing you because uh, life is not easy. And as you go into uh, the job market and you've got to do the things that you're doing right now, 5 o'clock in the morning working out, doing these tough things, you're going to sit back and say thank you. So uh, enjoy the moment and uh, congratulations for a great year and thank you for the award. Quick things. It's easy for a president to write a check right now, uh, which is talking about the Ducks. Nat signed the check for a very significant amount of money for us to win the Adams Cup. That's not why he got the award. Secondly, uh, congratulations on 135 years, and later tonight we can talk about your first year when the company first started. Uh, the next award uh, goes to the Paul Sirzo, who was a great coach for us. Outstanding player award. And in uh, January, this is a guy's on true story. I ordered the award. <coughs> and it was over. And then in um, April, um, I had to think about it. Uh, and not that this player that won it doesn't deserve it, but his little brother pushed him pretty darn hard down the stretch. Um, this guy, I, I always kid, I tell this thing all the time. Uh, this guy's a recruiting mistake. Uh, he was my number one recruit three years ago. He was number one, Nick Farrell was number two, Nick Celestino was number three. I got Fairweather and Celestino, I thought, oh, I'm getting this guy. Uh, and then one day, he told me that he was going to a place that he and I had never talked about. So the recruiting mistake was not mine, it was his, because he went to the wrong place. But he got there in short order and knew where his home was. I, I said this to Nick Fairweather uh, when we talked about uh, Joe, that I just had this feeling that this was his place. He would, he would shine here. Um, he had a great fall. He works incredibly hard. Um, he, when he finds his next year consistently, um, I know this. Uh, I'll be maybe six or seven years from now, and I'll be watching TV, and it'll be Sunday, and I'll be texting Dave Marcotte and Greg Barber and saying, oh, he's got to make this putt because he's going to win this first PGA tournament. Um, he's got it all as a golfer. Um, and um, when he can take me riding on the running portion of things, uh, it'll be terrific. Um, this time I'd like to invite Brandon Chikork up. Brandon is a two-time winner of this award. Uh, this is a very special award to us. You have to work out who can carry it. Uh, four-time A-10 Player of the Week. No one else in our league was four-time A-10 Player of the Week. First team in all, all A-10. Uh, we're supposed to be sworn to secrecy, but I'm not going to hold that against him. Joe, third leading vote getter in the A-10 for player of the week, for uh, first team all league, third. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, like I said, he had serious, he got pushed seriously down the stretch from uh, Billy, uh, who had just a great, a torrid second half of the spring. But this is our guy. Uh, he strikes fear in the people he plays with, uh, and it's not just because his father follows him. Uh, he, uh, he's a guy that has all the shots. He has so many shots, he knows this. I have to talk about it a few. Um, he was 10 over in the first round of the A-10 tournament, so I told Rick Barber, I do something I've never done before. I was going to walk all 10, I was going to walk all 18 holes with Joe the second day, because I thought we could make up 10 strokes. And he was two under after uh, nine, two, three, two under after 13. Then I left, and he shot a little bit more after that. No, I stick with him uh, through thick and thin. He just ran into a couple of tough situations, hit some phenomenal golf shots. Uh, and mark my words, next year we'll be exploring the fact that he won a number of tournaments. Um, my great pleasure to have this segment in our program, not just for his golf, but for what he brings to the program, Joe Levitt. Which brings us to why we're here tonight. With all due respect to my, ten, my other nine players, the award winners, uh, certainly the Emerald family, it means the world that they would come tonight. 
uh, Vice Director Pierre, a great producer here. I think I've introduced everybody except for the recruit and uh, a couple people from Andrew's family and Tom Francis, so I'm now introducing, so almost everybody got it. Uh, this young man, uh, I, I don't know if I can give a bigger compliment to say that every single day this young man makes me glad I was proud to be a coach. Uh, I know other people come to my life along the way that make me feel that, but this is the guy that makes me feel it right now. <coughs> Um, I'll miss him on many fronts. Uh, I'll miss his random text. Um, five seconds after uh, Thor announced that we were looking for a new basketball coach, I got a text. I was with my daughter at breakfast because I was trying to buy the boys the media. And I got a text from the friends out. Coach, we need to hire Danny Hurley now. <laughs> I was, uh, Random text when the Big East was breaking up, weren't deciding what they were doing. Coach, why in the heck would this happen? This team should do this, this school should do that. Uh, my, my two biggest mentors in my life were Dave Gavitt and Mike Franghese, two of the three commissioners of the Big East, but no one knew more about it than Andrew Franzano. Uh, so I'll miss that greatly. I, I, hope it, I hope it never goes away. I've had so many intense personal discussions with this young man. Uh, it's easy to say he's like a son to you and all that sort of stuff, but he's He's truly, truly something special and someone I know I'll miss. Uh, former Dean's List uh, honoree, uh, selected to be the uh, student athlete of the week at one of our basketball games. Like I said, two times Speaker of the House award winner, very few people. Selected from a pool of dozens and dozens of candidates to serve a very prestigious internship at EPA this past summer. Uh, he was the Robert Adams Exemplary Player Award, the first UI player to ever get that at the Adams Cup. NCAA Leadership Conference participant. Uh, we were allowed two nominees. One should come from a foreign country, and one should be from the United States. One should be male, one should be female. Andrew was our United States representative and the male representative, and we have 450, how many athletes? 460 athletes. This is the guy, the senior staff, that should go to the NCAA Leadership Conference. Boy, look at me. I, I have nominated you for a lot of stuff. Uh, all with pleasure. I always tell the guys, I don't send recommendations, I send evaluations. Uh, Four-year starter, spoke in the lineup after the uh, uh, Shelter Harbor uh, tournament as a freshman. Only came out of the lineup one time when he had mono. Uh, won the Yale Spring Invitational as a freshman. Uh, member of five different URI team championships. Uh, uh, first team all A-10 as a sophomore. Like I said, I, I'm rough on these guys. Oh, sorry, I am rough. Uh, I push hard. Uh, uh, but this young man is someone I enjoy pushing. I've told him a thousand times in text and in person. Love him too much and respect him much to let up on him. And uh, he's not going to like this, but it's not going to stop tonight. Uh, I can tell you a thousand things, but I, I, I want to tell a few stories, and they're personal stories. And if he doesn't like it, um, he can come up and say he doesn't like it. But I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, his sophomore year, after his sophomore year summer, he had been named to the uh, Northeast Amateur. And some people said some pretty mean things about that. And he was really, really upset. I was buying a tie at Macy's, uh, and the phone rang. And it's the summer, and it's Andrew. And I'm like, hey, Andrew, how you doing? I think it's going to be, coach, the Red Sox pitching is letting me down, or something like that. <laughs> coach, I, I, I can't hit my wedge. And he was really upset about what had happened. And this, this conversation, I, I literally left Macy's and sat on the curb for about 45 minutes. And during the conversation, it got around to all these things uh, in Andrew's life, and it got to his stature. And he said at one point, he said, Coach, you're six feet tall. You will never know what it's like to walk into a room with a crowd of people and not be six feet tall. And it really, it struck me. But the only thing that came out of my mouth was, Andrew, you're exactly right. But I'll never know what it's like to walk into a room with a crowd of people and have the whole room turn and say, there's Andrew Franzano. There's a man. There's a guy with unlimited potential. There's a guy we all like. There's a guy who's going places. There's a guy who's going to make a difference. So you're right, Andrew. I'll never know what it's like to be your height, but I'll never know what it's like to enjoy your opinions. The other story I want to tell is about the 12th hole of the A-10s. Uh, I actually said this to Thor before the round. I tell Thor all these random thoughts about me being as a coach, like when I'm failing or I'm not doing well. And I said, Today I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to follow Andrew for 18 holes. And typical Thor, my friendship with Thor, he says a perfect thing. Enjoy. Exclamation, exclamation. 
Well, I was going to follow Andrew because I was being selfish. I wanted to do it. And the phone call, he was really struggling. Uh, and I said, Tom, go do something. I haven't played well. And he got up over the ball and he knocked it in the water. And uh, he actually did a three step speech. He said, Oh, shucks. Oh, shucks. Oh, shucks. <laughs> Substitute the worst word you know for shucks when you're all set. Um, <laughs> and then he, he screamed, What did I do to deserve this? And why can't I shot where I want to hit it? And the receiver said, Shot about 35 yards right of the 10. So I walked over and I put my arm on his shoulder before he could take a step. And I said something to him that I want him to understand. I said, look around. There are five people here right now, four parents and me, five people who will never give up on you for the rest of your life. And you don't give up yourself today, not this day. So now I say to Andrew without fail, there's a room full of people who won't give up on you for the rest of your life. And there's people back on campus and their families who will never give up on you. And I think we're all proud to do it. It's our honor to not give up on you. So I'll leave you with this. He's heard this nine million times. All summer I say this, and I say this whenever he's down a little bit or ever being personal, I say the same thing. Ready? What's my fondest wish? Well, say, man, if I believe in myself, I can make a million. My fondest wish for Andrew Prinzano is to not make a million dollars, not to run a company, not to have a great family, because those are all given. My fondest wish for Andrew Prinzano is that one day he believes in himself as much as I do. A credit to his parents, his entire family, certainly his teammates, the University of Rhode Island, Rhode Island Golf, and this great game that we all love. The epitome of student athletes, the epitome of his teammates, and the epitome of the young man I want to attract to this program and influence. My dear friend, the great Andrew Franzano.
college and I got one. And uh, to my teammates, I know it wasn't more than a month ago when we were in this very room, and it was under a different set of circumstances, and we just played the first round of the uh, early invitational. And we, you know, we played terribly, and we should have, we should, you know, it's a tournament that we should win. And we're sitting in like sixth place or something. And I know Coach Barber and Coach Kerr kind of gave us the business in here. We were sitting like right over here. It was just us, and it was, I mean, it was a trip. But I think the point they were trying to, uh, we all remember the, uh, the point that they were stressing about how our preparation wasn't what it needed to be, and that led to our failure. And I think we learned a really valuable lesson that day. So if I could just impart that little bit of wisdom, if I've learned anything in my four years, I think you could take that lesson right there. And whatever you're doing, if it's your goal in golf or your goal in your Asian career, whatever it is, I think just put your best effort forward, prepare like this college group. And you guys are all talented on and off the court, so you guys can be fun. And uh, the coaches over the years, Coach Brennan, and Thor, thank you for giving me for giving me my start. Uh, without you guys, I, I wouldn't be here. And to Coach Burke, Coach Barber, you guys, I've learned so much from just being around you, just spending time with you, seeing how you interact with people on the road, seeing the way that you carry yourself when we're traveling and on campus, and in all situations, I've learned so much from you guys. And I'm very grateful for that, so thank you. And um, Coach Marcotte, um, I know I speak for everyone. You're really the glue of the team, you know? You mean so much to the program. And uh, I don't know what we'd do if we didn't have you, so I'm hoping that these guys can really use Coach Marcotte to help steer games in the future. Um, and really, uh, I'd just like to say that Rhode Island, the institution, the people here, you have everything at your disposal to succeed, so just take advantage of all of it. and. Uh, that's all you need to know about the UI golf right there. Um, I implore the young men uh, who will be back on the team next year to follow his example. Um, also implore you to understand how fast it went by. Really appreciate every support. It, of all the great things that happened this year, uh, maybe the two best things that happened was when we played the Wings in the fall. We had so many parents come out to dinner with us. And tonight to think that every single parent is here is remarkable. Have a great evening. Thanks for your support. Go Rose.